Thank you very much for coming today in spite of this um, extreme cold weather. And so first of all, I would like to, uh, all of you to know uh, how much I appreciate your support, friendship, and warm acceptance to this wonderful CJS community. Uh, since the summer before last, I mean, um, after I came here, I have had amazingly fantastic time with you. Uh, CJS people, especially Yuri, Peggy, and Jane, have been helping me in many ways, and I enjoyed exciting talk with CJS uh, faculties and students. So to be honest, it is the most comfortable days I ever had in my academic life. <laughs> and my book, which won Century Prize, was born under these fabulous circumstances. So in other words, CJS, University of Michigan, and the life in Ann Arbor gave a birth to this book to this book. And without my opportunity to come here, uh, I could not have even published a book yet. So please accept my sincere thanks to, for having me. Thank you. So today, I will argue for how Kyomai, literally uh, means Kyoto dance, uh, has become popular after 1945. In my point of view, uh, it is strongly related with Japanese post-war policy, such as promotion of tourism and preservation of cultural property. Moreover, uh, it was fostered by Japanese post-war desire to be a nation of culture and history. So let's start the reason why I chose this topic today for today's talk. So in my book, uh, Kyomai no Veryu no Tanjo, The Birth of Kyomai, I focused on the pre-modern history of the dance school. And the Inoue school used to be told to originate from the ancient female dance uh, called Shirabyoshi Mai, uh, which disappeared in 12th century, or Gotenmai uh, imperial dance at the court. And however, the name of the first headmaster of this school was found in the document dated 1822. And the school became popular in 1872 uh, when the then headmaster was appointed to choreograph uh, Geisha's public perform dance performance in Kyoto Exposition by Gion Association, which is the most po uh, powerful geisha quarter in Kyoto. So these five decades in the midst of 19th century is exactly the beginning of the school history. So I have read diaries and documents of, of the period and discuss how the school was established and popularized to get such a decisive position, like the choreographer of momentous occasion. So I transformed its history from a legend into a positive history based on the document. So however, uh, when I decided the title of this book, uh, I was a bit puzzled, because in 19th century, the term Kyomai has not yet bo been born. It was in the National Wide Magazine of Performing Arts, published in 1907, uh, when, where I found the term Kyomai as first used. So, but the term stood for just the dancers in Kyoto in general, so nobody seems to pay attention to the term. So for example, uh, so few examples of the usage of Kyomai can be seen before 1945. The school had never used the term for their performance, and they just used Inoue Ryubuyo, uh, Inoue School Dance, to represent their performance. However, when uh, Cultural Property Protection Committee designated the then headmaster of the school as a holder of important intangible cultural property after the war, uh, it is so-called living national treasure. Uh, she was under the category of Kyomai, and her title was an, was an instructor of Kyomai. So Inoue School started to use the term as a title of their public performance from 
uh, from that time. So then, in 1962, the popular playwrights wrote a drama entitled Kyomai, and which was um, premiered uh, by popular theatrical company Shinpa in 1970. The more the term has become popular, the more po people used it. So I can name this phenomenon like uh, uh, branding of kyomai. And today Japan is flooded with various kyomais. So, for example, Kyoto's local product fair are held in department stores all over Japan. On this occasion, Kyomai Kyoto Dance is one of the most beneficial attractions. So many other dance schools send their dancers under the label of Kyomai, and it was not only outside of Kyoto. Even in Kyoto City, other geisha districts had their geisha performance under the name of Kyomai. The Gion Association, which is the official organization of Inoue School, considered this uh, to be a trademark confusion. And <laughs> uh, they tried to register Kyomai as a trademark of Inoue School early in 2000. But in fact, at that time, Kyomai was used too widely to register for only one dance school. So instead, of, instead so they uh, registered Kyomai Inoue Ryu as a trademark of the dance um, in 2002. In this way, the term Kyomai and also the dance signified by the term had been become popular throughout Japan. So suddenly after the World War II. So today I would like to discuss how the term kyomai and the dance have been accepted by post-war Japan. So this topic would be the real birth of kyomai. Um, I have seen the dance kyomai for the first time uh, when I was an undergraduate. The dancer was Inoue Yachiyo the fourth, the then headmaster. So it was very strange for me. Uh, her movement was very different from any kind of dance uh, which I had seen before. It was calm, restrained, and static, but the, her expression was very dynamic and rich. So let me show you some example. This is a dance entitled Fukaki Kokoro, A Profound Thought, and in English, the representing Oishi Kuranosuke, the leader of 47 Ronin warriors, and uh, who is indulging in pleasure, but at the same time, he's concealing his determination to revenge their master. So, this film was shot in her 80s. It was when I, I saw her for the first time, and I also saw her in this kind of a big theater. For me, the samurai leader performed by this uh, short female dancer uh, appeared the most likely Oishi Kuranosuke than of any other kabuki or film actors. Next example is from her 90s. This is also from <laughs> <laughs> so this is also from NHK Broadcasting, but actually uh, it was me who shot this video. <laughs> I was asked to re uh, make a record of the dance from her granddaughter, uh, who is the present headmaster, Inoue Yachiyo the fifth, and she is, was my dance teacher. Then I found she gave the record to NHK when I was watching this TV program. <laughs> <laughs> it was very surprising. And the dance is entitled Oimatsu, the Old Pine Tree. And this is a celebratory dance. It was performed at the banquet room of the most popular tea house in Lyon, named Ichiriki. So I hope you grasp some my first impression of the dance. It's calm, restrained, and static, but at the same time, it's dynamic and very rich. I had become very curious about this age dancer, and <laughs> then I found she was an instructor of Kyomai in Gion, uh, Geisha Quarter in Kyoto. 
At this moment, uh, I had been to Kyoto on a high school trip only for once. And at the high school, before going to the school trip, uh, we learned history of Kyoto, reading uh, this Iwanami paperback, Hayashiya Tatsaburo's Kyoto. And I think it was, it is a still a good introduction, but I have to say uh, pre-modern history or pre-early modern history was given too much weight in the book. Out of 14 chapters, Hayashiya discussed Genro culture dated around 1700 in 13th chapter. So he packed a rough sketch of 18th and 19th century to the last chapter. So this was a kind of significant representation of Kyoto city then. So there was so-called uh, Kyoto legend uh, and when you say the last war in Japan, uh, it usually means the World War II. However, in Kyoto, it means the upheaval of Oni or the war of Oni, <laughs> Oni no Ran, uh, which brought up uh, 300,000 troops to battle in the street of Kyoto in uh, between 1467 and 1477. So Kyoto had fell in ruin as a result of this war, but at the same time, there was a plausible rumor that Kyoto had not been bombed during World War II. So the city still boasts of its many cultural properties. So I, I will talk about this rumor later. But, um, anyway, I enjoyed my school trip and learning its history to some extent. But Kyoto did not attract my attention at, at all then. So to the average high school students, uh, Kyoto appeared to be a strange, uh, boring, and arrogant town. <laughs> <laughs> so seven years after the high school trip, I started to conduct a research on my on Kyo, Kyomai at the graduate school and in Tokyo. So since uh, most of Japanese students from my generation did not study modern Japanese history. Um, <clears throat> as one of them, I was very much fascinated by Kyoto's history from pre-modern to the present. So I collected articles and historical documents in libraries and arch archives or in antiquarian bookshop or rare book collectors. as. At the same time, I started to learn the dance and interview the experienced geisha in Gion who knew the dance very well. So through interviewing, I gradually knew that Kyomai has become popular as the Japanese economy has grown after the World War II. So let's look at Inoue School's history around 1945. On Septem uh, September 7th in 1938, uh, the then headmaster Inoue Yatsuyo III passed away at the age of 101. This is the this is her. The this film the um, <coughs> was shot her in previous year. So she was at the age of 100. After her death, uh, at that time the Sino-Japanese war intensified and uh, also international tension ran high. So Geisha's annual public performance in Gion also tended to adapt militaristic and patriotic theme. So it was not a time to inherit the headmaster of school. The successor, Inoue Yatsuyo IV, was able to organize the public performance to announce the succession of the head in 1947, the two years after the end of war. So, but the title was Inoue Ryu Buyokai, the dance performance of Inoue School or the dance concert of Inoue School. So the term Kyomai was not used in this important occasion of the school. In the following year, the Inoue School public performance was held in Tokyo for the first time under the sponsorship of school's patrons. The performance titled was Kyomai at this moment. The, from this point, uh, patrons tried to publicize Inoue School in Tokyo area and 
under the name of Kyomai. So this organization leads to the uh, designation of Inoue Yachio the Fourth as a holder of important intangible cultural property under the category of Kyomai in 1955. So supported by patrons, Inoue Yachio the Fourth appeared on stage in various cities in Japan, such as Osaka, Nagoya, Ko and Kobe, and she was rising to stardom. In 1952, she received the award of the Japan Art Academy, Geijutsu Insho, and at this occasion, the Academy announced that she devoted herself to instruction of the Kyomai, which is only Japanese traditional dance from ancient time. Nihon Korai de Yuitsu no Kyomai no Shido ni Tsukushita. So since then, Inoue School started to announce themselves as Kyomai. So they began to use the term Kyomai in their title of public performance, no matter where it was held, not only outside of Kyoto, but also in Kyoto. So three years after receiving the honorable award, in, 19, in 1955, she became one of the first living national treasure. So among 12 artists in public, public section, a performance section, she was the youngest and the only woman. She was in limelight. As a living national treasure, she danced at special concert of National Designated Performing Arts, Kokka Shite Gei no Kansho Kai, uh, which were held in cities in Japan. Uh, she was also invited to dance at a famous theater, and under the purpose of the preservation of the intangible cultural heritage, NHK made a short film entitled Kyomai in 1959. So in this way, I can point out that Kyomai was popularized along with Japanese policy of preserve, preserving cu cultural properties. Intangible cultural properties are firstly defined legally by the law for the protection of cultural properties enacted in 1950. The law stipulated, stipulated to select the designated intangible ones uh, which require the protection. But in that moment, Kyomai was not selected. The law also stipulated to select holders and the holder group. And in 1955, 12 artists, including Inoue Yachio the Fourth, were designated as holders. Now please take a look at the list of the artists. As I told you, uh, she is the youngest and the only female artist. So if you look at these categories, other categories are much bigger than Kyomai. For example, Nogaku Shite Kata uh, comprise five different schools, and each school has as many as 30 to 100 professional actors. However, Kyomai at this moment signify only Inoue school. And there were on one headmaster and few instructors, and maybe 30 skilled disciples. So I mean the Inove school is of small size. And it seems somehow odd to choose Kyomai dancer as one of the first living national treasure. Of course, the committee needed to choose female living national treasure, and it must be a demand of the time. So, um, at Big, big success of Kyomai can be regarded as a part of successful construction of image of the city of Kyoto. So let me talk about the city of Kyoto for a while. And as I always mentioned, um, uh, already mentioned, Kyoto has an image of old capital uh, symbolized by Kawabata Yasunari, the old uh, capital Koto. Uh, the author who won a Nobel Prize in 1968 had set the story of separated twin sisters in Kyoto, uh, introducing scenic places and culture of Kyoto. And it was first published as a serial novel in Asahi newspaper in, from 1962 to 90, uh, 1961 to 1962. The first screen Adaption took place in 1963 and followed by several others for television or the film. 
So among the publications before 1945, I found scarcely few examples of usage of koto representing Kyoto. So this is a uh, catalog from National uh, Diet Library. And in fact, among 681 titles, which include the word koto, um, only 20 was published in uh, before the 1945. And so in fact, the Kyoto city government promoted modernization from the beginning of Meiji period, and the industry imported various technologies from Western uh, countries through, uh, through, uh, out, throughout their modern ages. So Kyoto was not an old capital before the World War II. Now, however, after the end of the war, it suddenly transformed into an old capital. For example, a lot of books which dealt with Kyoto as an old capital published after 1945. The number of those publications had incre increased, uh, especially uh, after Kawa Kawabata's novel. So what has brought this sudden transition? This transformation of the image of Kyoto is also considered to due to the post-war Japanese policy. Then Japanese government tried to promote international tourism as a variable method of acquiring uh, foreign exchange. As one of the special city construction laws, uh, Kyoto city government enacted the Act on Construction of, of Kyoto as a city of international culture and tourism in 1950. At the same time, uh, Nara and Matsue City enacted the same act. And however, Kyoto City faced to the financial difficulty. Uh, in order to attract tourists uh, with its cultural properties, the city of Kyoto had to prepare an environment for tourists to see, the, to see them. Because the city was always also imposed to protect its cultural properties by the law for the protection of cultural properties established in the same year, 1950. So in order to get out of this <coughs> difficult situation, on October 1st, 1956, the tax on cultural tourist facility of Kyoto City was enforced. The city of Kyoto continued to take measures uh, to preserve its cultural and historical property and to promote tourism. For example, in 1972, Kyoto enacted Act on Township Preservation. National government also continued to encourage cultural property protection and at the same time taking advantage of those properties to promote tourism. So Koto Hozonho, the ancient capital's preservation law, was enacted in 1966. Then Kyoto, Nara, and Kamakura were designated as Koto, the ancient capital. So now including them, uh, 10 cities are designated as ancient capital. So finally, the word Koto became a legal terminology. These are the social context of remarkable popularization of Kyomai as Kyoto, as Kyoto has become an older and more valuable city, Kyomai has become more precious art. Kyomai has become one of the most powerful icons of Kyoto's intangible cultural property. Both of Kyomai and the city of Kyoto have enhanced the value mutually. But more than the constitution of laws, I think what gave Kyomai a birth was a post-war feeling of the people. So do you remember that I mentioned Kyoto's rumor when the, uh, the Kyoto people said the last word, it, it, it means uh, the war in 15th century, not, not the World War II. So I would like to start with this rumor. So in fact, I often heard in Kyoto that they called an ancient war in 15th century as the last war, ignoring the World War II, because Kyoto was not damaged then, they said. But when I interviewed aged Kyomai dancers, they also told me about the war. And 
They said there had been several air raids in, in Kyoto. And I also found the report of research on air raids in Kyoto too. So why did Kyoto people deny the fact of damage during the war, uh, during the World War II? And when I started to doubt it, I also remembered another story, which is the United, which is the United States did not bomb to the city which had cultural property. I don't, I do not remember who told me, but it was widely uh, accepted as a fact. So then I came across the book. Um, Yoshida Morio's Kyoto ni genbaku wo tokase yo, Drop the Atomic Bomb on Kyoto. <laughs> the, yeah. By the way, I don't like this title. <laughs> it's, it's too commercial. <laughs> so, anyway, this book argued how the legend which the United States protected uh, cultural city from bombing has been made up. So he called it Warner Legend, named after Dr. Landon Warner, American art historian specializing in Eastern Asia, East Asian art. So during the World War II, the Warner was a member of the Monument, Fine Arts, and Archive section of the U.S. Army. He made a list of cultural heritage in Japan. This list is called Warner's List. And with this list, it was said that Warner advised against fire bombing on Kyoto, Nara, and other ancient cities to protect cultural heritage of Japan. But reality was much more severe. Uh, in fact, the both of Kyoto and Nara had been on the short list of prospective targets for the atomic bomb. So to measure the destructive power of the atomic bomb, the place on the short list had been preserved from bombing. So Yoshida also wrote that it was GHQ General Headquarters of Allied Power uh, which made up the rumor and spread it. It was an information strategy aiming at the ideological transformation of Japanese people. So Yoshida wrote that the purpose of the list which Warner made during the war was to have Japan return and compensate for the cultural properties of Japan's occupied territories. So, however, Japanese people believed in the story and showed their gratitude. Uh, Dr. Warner himself repeatedly denied any responsibility for the fortune of two cities. But his attitude appeared to be the um, very Japanese modest behavior so, <laughs> so the, uh, to the Japanese people. So although Dr. Warner contested, the belief was too en entrenched and it becomes more powerful. And he was uh, posthumously awarded the Order of the Sacred <coughs> Treasure uh, in recognition of his work. And Memorial Shrine was built on the precinct of the Horyuji Temple in Nara. Also, monuments were erected in other cities, including Kyoto and Kamakura. The Yoshida, the author of this book, uh, flatly criticized this story. The Warner legend, and but Yoshida's book was not well accepted. Maybe because the title was not like academic publication, and his way of writing was too accusing, and it appeared to me to ridicule those those who believe in Warner legend and those who showed their gratitude to Dr. Random Warner. So before Yoshida denied the Warner legend. Uh, Otis Carey was, has argued that the credit of, for leaving Japanese cultural heritage sites undamaged belongs to the U.S. Secretary of War, Henry L. Stimson. So Carey uh, emphasized that Stimson saved Kyoto because Kyoto was the ancient city and the repo repository of the, the arts and culture based on his memories, memoirs uh, written after the war. 
On the other hand, Yoshida denied Carey's view using Stimson's diary to argue that Stimson removed Kyoto from the shortlist st strategically, anticipating Japan as a post-war friendly nation of the United States. So, but recently, it is said uh, Yokipe Makoto, uh, also the historian, Japanese historian, wrote an article on Mainichi newspaper on January 14, 2007, uh, following Kerry's perspective. Actually, I was not able to find this article on the newspaper of the day, so I think there must be some mistake in the bibliographic uh, information. According to personal info, uh, homepage citing his article, uh, Yokibe wrote that the reason why Stimson spared Kyoto was his beautiful memory of traveling Kyoto in 1928. And the title of the newspaper article is An Individual Changed the History. The atomic bombing on Kyoto was evaded. Kojin ga lekishi wo kaeta, kaihi sareta Kyoto eno genbaku. So why do Japanese people want to find the saber among American, the Americans? And in other words, why do they believe in existence of the saber? And why Japanese people tend to think that an individual American saved Kyoto? So of course it was the strategy of GHQ, and maybe the plan was very successful and was able to control for more than half century. And it was surprising that even in last decades, there was an article searching for the saber. I learned from those arguments that the rumor was invented and a uh, decision was made not with kindness, but strategically uh, during the war. Uh, it must be somehow painful or heartbreaking to keep looking for the good intention. And however, I would like to think in this way, the rumor was necessary for the Japanese people after the defeat. One of the reasons why this rumor was widely accepted is that uh, it was able to nurse the pride of the Japanese people. It was the recognition of that there are variable cultural properties in Japan. And the United States, victorious nation with extremely strong power, has to admit its value. So for, fee for people who were completely defeated under a devastating modern weapon, the existence of the historical cultural property acknowledged even by the former enemy is then their only solace. And for uh, for prostitutes, Prostrated Japanese people, this rumor becomes a notable fact that guarantees so-called Japanese identity during reconstruction after the war. So let's go back to the post-war Kyoto. Along the act on construction of Kyoto as a city of international cultural, cultu cultural and tourism, culture and tourism, the city of Kyoto have improved environment for cultural properties and landscape protection. In 1956, the Citizen Charter was established starting, stating preservation of cultural property and warm welcome to the tourists. So several cultural complex were built in the city, Kyoto Kaikan and the prefectural archives, Sogo Shiryokan are the example. The city also encouraged organizing cultural events such as exhibition and performance of traditional art. So conser conservation of annual events and re-establishing establishment of the ancient rituals were also taken place, uh, Jidai Matsuri and Aoi Matsuri for instance. The document of the bill for the construction of the city of international and cultural tourism in Kyoto points out that alone Kyoto, st Kyoto stayed in the best condition in all over Japan to give hospitality to tourists from the whole world. The number of the international tourists increased in to 200,000 in 1963 and it passed to 486 in 1970, when Osaka Expo was held. 
So thanks to the policy of after 1945, Kyoto has become a representative tourist city of Japan. It was obvious that Kyoto's touristic resource was the cultural heritage from the time when Kyoto was the capital. Although Yoshida Morio proved the incorrectness of the famous uh, invented history, this tale allowed to think that the cultural property of Kyoto is truly precious to be protected even by the enormous enemy. So it depended, uh, developed the picture of Kyoto as an ancient capital which has a long history for more than a thousand years and also had an authentic Japanese culture from the time. So Kyoto was not anymore a modern city. It has become a city where the ancient tradition and archaic, archaic rituals are still alive. Kyoto appears as an um, elegant and ancient city. The same theory can be applied to dance Kyomai. Now, it is not strange that Kyomai has been told as the dance originated from imperial dance in ancient time. So Kyomai is the dance which has a long history as that of the city of Kyoto. So archaism, elegance are pictures that Kyoto and Kyomai shares. When the term Kyomai was developed in, uh, in an ideal manner, the Inoue school made use of the term. If Kyoto was not attractive, Kyomai would remain to be just a regional dance. But today, people respect and are proud of the city of Kyoto and dream to go there. Kyoto became a kind of symbol of tradition and culture of Japan. The term Kyomai followed after Kyoto. The term Kyomai was born to represent the dance of Inoue school. However, it became a term with strong implication. The reason why Kyomai was chosen as important intangible cultural property is now very clear. The conserv conservation of tradition in Kyoto was a crucial mission of Japanese government after 1945. So traditional culture in Kyoto must have been protected by Japanese government at that time because it was Japan's turn after believed protection of, um, by Americans during the war. So having a long history and artistic value, Kyomai was desirable, desirable self-portrait of post-war Japan. Thank you.